Uh, I'm going to be doing stand-up comedy today about conventions in my life and how I existed. Uh, and before I get this comedy bit started, by comedy bit is brought to you by peer pressure. I succumb easily to peer pressure. Yeah. Hello, Sapir Pond 2019! I love coming to conventions. My wife, though, is kind of like, yeah, whenever I go. The reasoning why is that whenever I go to conventions, the first place I go is to the market. Oh, yeah. All that good stuff there. Most of it, though, ends up in one of two places, either in the back of my car or stuck inside the garage. And my wife always likes to come up and goes, Travis, what are you going to do with all this stuff? I look at her and go, we're going to have the world's greatest anime garage sale for all the retired people that are around me. <laughs> yeah, you all laugh right now, but you're going to like see three weeks from now, three old ladies are going to be going down like Ninja Nerd going like, I'm going to be the next Hokage. <laughs> Because whenever I go to the marketplace, I look like a fat kid off Willy Wonka going down to Kenya with mom's credit card. <laughs> Walking down there, coming back to her with like six bags full of stuff, and I say, Honey, we don't need food or rent this month. We got waifus to draw. It'd be great. Though, what I really, really like doing is I like getting my wife a gift. And this year I got her a documentary or a body pillow for short. Yeah. She said she liked Dumbledore. I believe this pose was. And if you don't know what a body pillow is, the single people at the maid cafe can tell you all about that. <laughs> I really do like coming to conventions, and one of the biggest things I like coming to see is the cosplay. There's some cool looking people out here today. I'm actually in costume myself. Yeah, I'm cosplaying as a successful adult. <laughs> It's one of those magical things that you get to do as a little person. You get to do as a little kid doing dress up, and you turn it into a full time working job with absolutely no freaking pay. <laughs> it's like being a YouTube Let's Player. Oh. I'll talk to YouTube about that, they know about that. But cosplay does teach you some important life skills like sewing and color coordinating and crying into a pillow because you couldn't fit into your costume for tomorrow night. And Minor first aid for stabbing your finger to, with stabbing a needle into your finger. Major first aid for knocking out the guy beside you because he dished your costume. And of course, the, and of course, the ability to say no, as in no, I don't want to take a picture with you, Hopperheads Harry and Stinky Steve, because I don't want to have to fake a smile while taking a picture with you because you didn't learn the concept of so. <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, when I, when I talk about saying no, one of the things I always say is that, no, I don't want to sell you my favorite high-end costume I just made for your magical exposure points. Ooh, exposure points. The knockoff brownie points that don't buy your crap in the real world. Absolutely. If you've got a skill, a set of art, whether it be costume, cosplay, or anything like that, sell it for cash and don't sell yourself short. Absolutely. One of the favorite things I like to also come see here is the voice acting. And for those of you who are unaware, voice acting is the magical art of sitting in a small, quiet room, angrily yelling at yourself with all these strange voices that come from the inside of your head. You sound like you should be in a mental home in a voice acting room. But voice actors that come here come to see all their fans from far and wide. It's the only time the fans get to ask the most important questions, like, what was it like on set? Who was your favorite actor? And you know, very good questions like that. Then they get to the weird questions. <laughs> and before any of you ask, I see a few of you looking at each other like, yeah, I know you're asking them. The weird questions try to start walking like, can I, can I hug you and never let go? Uh, why didn't your favorite character get shipped with my favorite character? I had been shipped for weeks. And one of my personal favorite questions I always hear kind of get popped up one at a time is, can I have some of your hair? I brought some scissors. You know, I'm never too worried about that question, though, because by the time I become that famous, I'll be so old that all of my hair will be out of my head, and they can have as much as they want. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me on stage, everybody.